Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Um, today I would like to reflect with you, and actually not reflect with you, about wisdom and a little bit about worldly wisdom and God's wisdom and how, they think, how these things work. And a little bit of background, why I'm even thinking about this is um, I was studying this, this leadership material with, with my friends um, and there was this example, like a case study, so to speak, of Bill Gates here and his magnificent plan with Microsoft. And he was uh, like presented in a very positive light in this um, study, whatever, and um, about, you know, how he turned the company to better and stuff. And I'm not the biggest fan of either Microsoft or or Mr. Bill, Bill himself. So that's a little bit triggering to me or hard to swallow, you know? And like what I'm thinking is like these worldly leaders who certainly, most certainly do not recognize God, do not have a personal relationship with God, none at all. Like evidently they have a personal relationship with some other spiritual being that's not very godly. But like when they're demonstrated at least as operating in this great wisdom, like what should I think about it? Because in in Bible it says that all treasures of knowledge and wisdom are hidden in Christ Jesus. At least that's the way I remember, something like that. Um, so, and that's all. So, how can we have wisdom separate of Christ and then have Christ's wisdom? And, like, how are we supposed to follow these things? And I did a video about this earlier as well, about following God's systems versus following the systems of man, and that can help you maybe reflect on this more as well. I'll link it here and here, I guess. Uh, but I'm still thinking about that. Like, how much should we follow this, you know, steps one, two, three? And is it wisdom? Uh, before we go into that, or kind of part of, uh, part of going into that, I would like to speak a little bit about what, what at the moment do I think wisdom is? And what is knowledge and what is understanding? And this is just my thinking at the moment. But I think you will find this edifying because I think it's pretty... I haven't heard this thought this way too much. And what there speaks to me is the book of Proverbs and how Proverbs speaks of wisdom. And it says something on the lines that call wisdom your sister and understanding your king's woman or something. So it, it describes wisdom as this like woman that like sets up the table and calls people to eat and to understand, to leave their ignorance and to receive knowledge and the fear of God. But it, it is it describes wisdom as a person. And in video games, typically, you know, we have this, uh, let's say this is a video game character here. It's a soldier guy, whatever. Typically, they have these stats, you know, this is his strength and this is his dexterity. And then he has wisdom. And this is, uh, this is also how we do this in real life. We think of IQ, for example. We try to measure these things and we think of them as attributes of this character, of this leader, or you are as a person, and you say, you have an IQ of 145, pretty whatever. And it's like inherently in you. And that's the message kind of displayed through this video games, through the school system, through this sort of, I don't know, all sorts of tests and stuff. But... It's, it's different because this wisdom here is not obviously it's not inside you well not so obviously but still 
But what if instead of us possessing wisdom, like here, as an attribute or something, what if it was a relationship? So what if you just knew wisdom? And what if it was like this? Let's say you're, you're um, having a meeting or something. You need to make an important decision in your business. Here's a contract to sign or not to sign, and negotiations are going on, and this is your potential client speaking here and trying to sell this product, okay? And let's say here's wisdom. First, and she says, be fond of this, think of this, do this, follow this. Remember this instruction. Remember what your father, father told you. Remember what God told you. Remember what Bible says here. Listen, follow this instruction so you will not go away. This is the path to follow. Let me show you. Then you're like taking notes, like trying to say the meeting, but Then you say, oh, but how about num num num? And they're like, what? How did you know? This to us, you have said, I was, no, I was And what's that photo? But for example, like, let's take a more realistic sample. Like Joseph and Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was sitting here and he was showing his dream about the cows and the and the weed stuff. And uh, what was Joseph doing? He received the word from God, an interpretation to this uh, Pharaoh. Fa Pharaoh, yeah. And he was wise. At least he was perceived to be very wise, and I think he was. He, you won't even say he was wise. But what did Joseph, what did Dave and Daniel say in these sort of situations says this is not of me this is of god god gives interpretations god gives answers i'm just the messenger i'm delivering this to you so he attributed the wisdom the true wisdom with god so god is the one who possess it, possesses wisdom if that's a thing but we are the ones who have a relationship with wisdom so and this relates to our previous um, reflection also on authority, because it has the same sort of so sequence thing, you know, that when you're operating in a relationship, authority relationship, and operating in your position, you can operate in that wisdom without having it in yourself. And if Joseph here would have moved, like, nah, I mean, God's calling to save the save the people of Jacob, but, but I have other things to do. I want to wage war in, in Italy or whatever. <laughs> so um, F that, and I'll go here. So, of course, I mean, God, through his grace, might still provide that wisdom and not re re take back that calling from his life, but it's not the same thing. That's from grace. That's not you owning wisdom, that's God showing his Christ still after you failed or after you, you forsook him, basically. But that's a hypothetical situation or like this sort of speculation, whatever. Um, demonstration. So I think that is very valuable, thinking of wisdom as like a relationship with the being. It's very close to God. It's either God or the Holy Spirit or a spirit of wisdom, you know, or something like that. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it works. But I find it interesting, an interesting thought to think of her as a person. And, for example, me not possessing any wisdom in myself, but just speaking what he's, she speaks to me, speaking what God speaks to me, speaking what the Holy Spirit speaks to me. However that goes. But... Uh, that's wisdom, okay? Let's not go to knowledge and understanding because they're not important here, I think. But let's return to our initial problem. So what to do with this? How about Bill Gates? 
uh, does he have a relationship with wisdom or not? Or has he acquired knowledge somewhere? Maybe we are dealing more of knowledge and maybe understanding even. But uh, I guess we have to define those. Just quickly, knowledge in my current perspective understanding is that it's a, like a fact that you know. And knowledge is power in the sense that if you know something, it enables you to know do something else. It gives you an option. And maybe you know something that they don't, and that gives you an edge. Like in war, you know that your enemy has a weak spot on that wall over there. That's a piece of knowledge, okay? And that knowledge can help you tremendously in winning that war, because you just place a bomb there and, you know, defeat the enemy. But So, like facts and pieces of information that you know, uh, and really not just something that someone tell, told you, but something you really know. There's a difference. But anyway, let's not go there. But how about understanding? To me, it's um, when you understand something, that something is typically a system or a network of ideas and concepts and things that relate to each other. And understanding has a lot to do with these links here. So it, see, it kind of can predict, can visualize, can think, can review things in your mind about the, the relationship of things, the invisible relationship of things, okay? So if I, let's say you have knowledge about fish. You know fish lay eggs. You know fish eat seaweed or other fish you know fish live in water that's your knowledge okay but you don't necessarily understand fish okay if you understand fish you can imagine you can go into that in your mind you can go into the lake you can look at their environment you can make accurate predictions based on their environment okay this this has too much nitrogen or whatever and and that's how it's going to affect this fish population because that's how they're going to behave and that's their role in this ecosystem and, you know, that sort of thing. You know, understanding the system as a whole. So maybe he has understanding. That's maybe crediting too much, but most likely a lot of knowledge. And of course, one perspective, this is hypothetical, certainly so, but one perspective is that here's God, here's his heavenly uh, throne, you know. Uh, let's say here are the sons of God, the angels of old or whatever beings they are, glorious things, whatever. And they have authority and rulership over different things, maybe over the earth, maybe something else, I don't know. Uh, but they've been in on the And how God does things, and God's been teaching them and, and instructing them and giving them some of his authority and knowledge and so, so on and so forth. And then, let's say, one third of them decides to rebel and start his own business instead of following God's business. So now he's, he's a freelancer. Freelancer sort of guy. Or maybe under this principality over here. Now, he still has the knowledge that he received while he was the son of God in operation. So now here's Mr. Gates or whoever, Cadel, <laughs> I guess. It's funny how, what happens when I try to write. But anyway, who has formed a relationship with this one and is in the authority relationship. So maybe he gives some knowledge here. And that can be godly knowledge. Because it's from God, and God has wisdom. God uh, exemplified wisdom when he created the earth and the heaven. So one could say it is godly wisdom, but it also is devilish wisdom because it's it's from a devil, you know? So it's godly devilish wisdom. What makes it devilish? What makes it godly? 
godless is origin, devil is this, this, this de detached relationship, okay? So it's no longer a direct relationship with God. And it's in, in that sense, it's not wisdom, if, if you think of wisdom as a relationship, but we're kind of mixing things up here. Maybe it's subtlety or knowledge or understanding, whatever. But no longer relationship. Something here, okay? And something operated independently. Like, for example, when God created the mankind, Adam and Eve here, he said to them, you can eat, you should eat, of all trees, except this one. Because this one will give you knowledge of good and evil. What knowledge? How knowledge? Not through a relationship with him. No. True independence. Independent of God. Giving them the same position as Satan has, for example. He doesn't have a relationship with God. Positive relationship, at least. But maybe he has eaten of the food of whatever, you know, or operated previously under that knowledge, whatever. I don't know. I don't know, okay? But it's independent. It's not a relationship. But still, it's knowledge of good and evil. It's Now it's with that. Now they have knowledge independent of God. So there is, there is a distinction there. I don't know how it works, but maybe you can instruct on this. Maybe you can give additional insight here, okay? But this is kind of a reflection on what may be going on. So that's why I kind of initially named this abusers of wisdom, because it's not having a healthy relationship with wisdom, the spirit or whatever. No, it's it's taking something from wisdom, some knowledge here, then running off with it and using it for your own gain, ditching wisdom, you know. So that may be what's happening. I don't know. I just cannot see how how they would have a relationship like that. Like wisdom says, you know, my thoughts are righteous, pure, holy, good, and wickedness is an abomination to me. And then what we see, the actions and the results of these so-called wise people is wickedness, evil, murder, solid sacrifice, you know, things that are not in God's heart. So they are not inspired by God. They are not in a close relationship with God. It is inspired by something completely else. But yet, we see this kind of wisdom, so to speak, demonstrated. So, yeah, today maybe more questions than answers. Unfortunately or fortunately, <laughs> let me know. Do you like, or well, like is a stupid word, okay? Do you find it edifying? this sort of questioning or more sharing of kind of revelations <laughs> uh, or stupidity, however you want to say it. I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts. And what can you bring into this discussion yourself? Like, there's certainly something I don't see. But help me see. Help me see what's going on here. What's wisdom, really? What, what's the worldly wisdom, where it comes from, how it works, how does these things work, and how to work things righteously, especially. Like the practical thing, of course, is that me or you as a leader, how are we supposed to function? Are we supposed to follow the big, big G, you know, in gates? <laughs> or... Uh, are we supposed to do something completely different? You know, are we supposed to use the same techniques or not? Is it wise? Of course, probably all of these are answered when we have a strong relationship with God and we follow Him and we understand and we understand the systems of God, systems of man, revelation, thought, processing things. But still, help me understand, please. 
And I hope we have a good discussion. I hope you enjoy and learn something and this made you think of something. And I hope to see you in the next leadership reflection.